Hey everyone, Scott here at Saltwater Fishing Tampa. Hey, I had a request from a uh, viewer asked me, Scott, how do you how do you clean your fish and uh, how do you sharpen your knives? And uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do today. I'm going to show you that. So, and I'm you know I'm just a recreational guy. I'm not a captain. So I'm just going to show you how I've been doing it all my life. And uh, I usually don't fillet my fish unless they're big ones like cobia. But uh, I'm going to do some mangroves today. I'm going to show you how I do it my way. So. I, I scale them and I cut them whole and I, and I score them, but this is this is the way my wife likes them and this is the way that I was raised and I love them like this. But anyways, here's the mangroves I got the other day. So uh, this is um, this is my uh, Kevlar fillet glove. Got to have that. I use it on my left hand. And uh, here's my cleaver. I use this cleaver right here and my Cast King fillet knife right here and scissors. I use these all the time. These these are really good. And my my scaler right here. I love this one this brass one and here's my sharpener just this uh, carbide steel right here and I'm gonna show you how that's done so just hang on I'm gonna I'm gonna get that going and I always have a couple of buckets right here with ice water in them to keep the fish fresh normally they're, they're kept in the water I put them out here just just for presentation purposes but but that's what I do I'll show you I'll show you how I do it so and uh, it, it's really neat this is the way I like them so today I'm just gonna just gonna do it the uh, the regular way and um, scale them uh, defin them and um, then take the intros out and then uh, dehead them and I'll show you the finished product really good so hang tight we're gonna do it well this pretty much is how I take this I take this carbide um, uh, steel and a lot of the chefs use it now I kind of keep it just like this and I want I want to keep about a uh, 15 degree angle and I, and I fillet it and pull it down as if I'm filleting something here so it works better if I do this here so what I have is my there's a little cup holder there just to steady it and this is the 12 inch carbide so I take it and fillet it down just like this just like that a couple times on each side as if I'm filleting it putting pressure down pressure down you can feel like it's cutting into it just cutting into it cutting into it just like that that's how I sharpen my knives just like that and I'm putting pressure on it just like this it doesn't take much with this carbide steel then I rotate it just like that and you can feel it digging in and just taking any of the burrs off and fine honing it very very sharp it gets it really sharp yeah I mean for a cleaver that's really that's really sharp that's all I really need and what I do my my fillet knife I kind of hold it close like this and you can feel it just cutting right into it just like that just like that a lot of people want to do one swipe but go like this and that tip right there I'll hold it like this and just get this tip and this really sharpens it this really just sharpens it you can just feel it taking all the burrs off like I said, just, just as if you're filleting real thin layers off it, just like that. Almost like a sushi chef, you know, when they give you that real tiny piece of sashimi that you spend five dollars on, but you can see the blade bending like that. So I'm really just taking off thin layers is what I'm acting like I'm doing. And you can just, now I'd be going a little faster like that, and you can just feel it taking all the burrs off and, and it's really fine rotate it a little bit and you can really feel it taking taking off little micro particles of the steel and getting it sharp and that's about all I do and it's it's really sharp I mean that's all you need you can just you, I don't know if you can hear it but it's really cutting into that I don't use a sandstone a lot of people do but this is this is my style of doing it just like that so that's how I sharpen it that's the way I do it. The flay knife and the cleaver, and um, that's about all I use. This is the only one that I really use, and I said, like it's the scissors. Oh, these are great for cutting the fins off, so this is really nice. You can go over the meat without damaging it. Take all the scales off, so that's how I sharpen it. Well, here, here's the fish in the in the ice bucket. Look at that's a nice mess of fish, isn't it? These are, these are nice, beautiful mangroves. I mean, this water is really cold. Holy cow! Anyway, so I'm I'm getting ready to uh, start uh, cleaning them right here. So uh, stay tuned. It's gonna be exciting. <laughs> if cleaning fish is exciting, this is gonna be it. Just start out with the uh, start out with the scissors. Doesn't really matter where you start. I mean, I can just start right like this and just cut right down. Keep pulling on it. 
Just keep pulling on that. Just keep going right on down the line. Get everything on that guy, just like that. Keep it to the side, just cut these off, just like that. Work your, work your way around this guy. And uh, look at these beautiful fish, look at this. They're so they're so beautiful. What I did is I kept them in ice overnight, so if you see their eyes a little bit glazed, that, that's not bad at all. I mean, I mean the fin, the look at, look at the gills. They're 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 really red. So I mean, oh, they're really healthy. I mean that that's really nice. I mean, just beautiful fish, healthy. These are really going to be good to eat. And um, I only got one more to go. This guy in the back. That's all right here. This bone. That's a tough little bone right there. You have to get a good get a good pair of scissors. I mean, you can get some poultry shears to do it too, but these these are eight dollars and eighty eight cents at Walmart. So, and then you just just do the back, just like I showed you before. I really like the tails crisped up, but in the freezer bags they just won't fit. So then I just cut them off like boop, just like that. Off it goes. Like I said, this knife is really sharp. So then I just keep all the stuff in a little bag right here. And I get ready for a, a garbage. I mean, there's very little waste when you do it this way and uh, grab the scaler and just start scaling this guy. Now I'm gonna show you a different way where I can take the head off and do it, and I'll show you that way. But um, this is this is a really fast way to do it too. Just like this, just take that, take all these scales off. You see why I like this rounded one? It doesn't doesn't damage the, the, the fish at all. And keeping them in ice like this, it really, really stiffened up the, the fish, makes it easy to clean, easy to scale, and. And I usually keep them compacted in ice overnight like this if I'm too tired to do it, which, you know, like I said, I'm just a recreational guy that works, you know, 50, sometimes 60 hours a week. And um, so there you go. And I go out fishing whenever I can. Whenever I see a day off, I'm, I'm lucky that I can find a good windless day. If I work a weekend and take it off during the day when there's when there's nobody out at the ramp, that's great. But then... That means that there's more dolphins around your boat when you're the only show in town. So, kind of like the only food truck uh, outside for lunch, and you got everybody coming out for lunch, and then say, hey, let's go over here. And then they say, see my boat. What I do when I'm out there is I'll turn my depth finder off, because those dolphins, they know when the depth finder's running, they can hear the sonar bouncing off the bottom. So, I just want them to hear the pingers. But uh, this guy's, uh, he's ready to... Uh, get the head cut off and there isn't really a lot of waste look at look at how fast that cleaver cuts right through that head i mean my wife has a friend that likes the heads now we'll keep the heads on the grouper and split them down the middle but there's not a lot of waste on this fish at all i mean i hardly waste anything watch how this just cuts right through it just like that all that fat on that guy holy cow look at that look at that and you know, I always give them a final rinse and, and get these off inside, but then I got my bucket over here that I, I just dip it in, just like that. Get rid of these over here. And I got a little bucket here and I'll do a little little rinse on the table. Yeah, this is just, a, it's not a, this isn't a very uh, expensive outfit here, but look at, I mean, look at this. This is just, and, and if you want to, you want to go over it, make sure you got everything just like that. Just like that. I mean, fairly easy, but look at look at all the meat on this. I mean, this is a nice piece of fish. No no wasted meat. And usually, once you score them like this, you fry them. All this whole section of meat comes right out with hardly any bones. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna get some bone in here, but that's really nothing to to work your way through. But it's really delicious like this when you when you fry it with the with the skin on like that. But that I mean that's that's a big. <laughs> That's a big piece of fish. I mean, if you fillet them, you're going to be missing a lot of the meat in here. I, you know, I mean, some people are really good at it, but uh, this is how we like them. And uh, there you go. And that's the final presentation on the plate. It's really delicious. Oh, yeah, I love mangrove snapper, but it won't take me long to clean these guys up. I'm going to do it right now. So go over with this guy. Well, let me show you this. I'm going I'm to take this one and I'm, I'm going to cut this off cut these cut these fins off then we'll take the head off first and I'll show you that way to do it so we'll do that do this one do that just like that and get this one I always have a certain pattern about how I go about it trying to trying to get all that off pull that out of there come on you can do it there you go get that off then this way just like that getting that top one off 
just follow it straight down. Follow it straight down, just like that. Go on it, go on it. You can tell I've been doing this for a while. And then take the take the tail off just like that right in there. Fairly quick. You've seen you've seen him do this at the uh, at the uh, Asian markets. And okay, now he, he's not scaled. So what I'm going to do is I'll show you I'll show you this way. I mean, there's a way to do it this way. Just just like that. Cut it off. Come in here. Look at how fast that cut right through that. Look at this and look at all that fat in that man. I tell you. And a lot of times when I clean these guys up, not normally I'll find greenbacks in them. I haven't seen a greenback yet. So. But um, then I'll just rinse this guy off real quick like this. Give this a quick rinse right here, just like that. There you go. Leave that head out there. And so now I have it, I have it, he's got scales on him. So this is how I normally hold him, just like this. And I put my, my finger in here like this. And this is another way to do it. If you want to take the fins off, then the head. And this is a pretty quick way too. Sometimes you get a little more control with your fingers, see how that might work that. Then come around the top like this. Then just flip it over. Get in there like that. Just like that. And it's in there like that. See my thumb in there? Pushing up on this to hold the, the belly uh, meat up there. Just come around the back just like that. And this guy looks pretty good. Yep. I mean that didn't take, that didn't take long at all, and uh, you know you don't have to waste a lot of time. You don't get a lot of. I mean, there's no there's no blood on the table, and um, there it is. There's another nice piece of fish right there. You know you can go over this when you're done. I will on the final rinse, but uh, there you go. Nice nice piece of fish right there. Yep. Oh yeah. And I put them in vacuum freezer bags. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> my freezer's been so full. I have one in the garage, a five cubic foot, plus the the, uh, the freezer in the house. <laughs> it's just full of fish, and I've been giving away to all my friends, and I, I just keep putting them in there. I keep catching them. So um, last time I went out, uh, uh, my friend, I said, hey, take them all. I said, I have no more room in the freezer. <laughs> so, but that's it. That's the finished product. So then I just put these in the clean water in the bucket, and, I, and I'll show you that too. So, uh then I just then I just go on to the other ones and I do the same thing. I just move on and, and I'll show you the end product here. Well, here's what I was telling you about. Look at see this. Look at this. This is a little greenback in there. I just cut into it and look at that. See right there. Look at that. Look at that in the stomach. It's a little piece of greenback and looks looks like it was cut and someone was using it for chum. But look at that. Unless he bit it in half, but pretty interesting. So I'm just about finishing up on these guys, but. Normally, all my greenbacks I've been getting all summer long is uh, uh, their bellies are just just full of the greenbacks, all, and they're and they're cut up too. So someone's chumming them. Well, so there you have it. I mean, um, here's here's the fish. They're all they're all clean. I had them in the water, and um, I just keep them in my little five gallon bucket with a bunch of ice water, and uh, it didn't take long at all. But here's the here's the main tools I use. My my cleaver like this, keep it sharp with my sharpener right here, and um, then my my cuda scissors, all uh, eight dollars worth. And uh, and my scaler right here, very nice. And uh, I did, I don't even really need this. I just showed you how to. Uh, I, I rarely take this out except I'm cutting bait, unless I flay my cobias and and the bigger grouper. But the bigger grouper, I want to show you how I cut them in the steaks. Anyways, I'm going to show you uh, if you look up at the picture here how how I fry them in the pan, and uh, that's exactly how we do them, and uh, that's how I like it. Uh, and then we flip it. Very nice, very very tasty fish. Love it this way. I, I this is like I said. I was raised this way, and look at all the meat on these guys. Look at this. Look at that meat. Oh my gosh! And the skin. I like the crispy skin. Just really good eating. And then I'll put these in vacuum uh, sealed bags. But very fresh, healthy Tampa Bay mangrove snappers. I mean, finally Tampa Bay. Let's. I always check the FWC red tide charts, and and uh, they're not even really checking in the upper bays anymore. And uh, but there is some way up in Hernando. And down in Sarasota, they're showing some, and down by Port Charlotte, uh, some red tide. So, I mean, uh, let's hope it just goes away and doesn't come back to Tampa Bay. And you see my, um, this is my Kevlar glove. I use that, take it out there fishing too. But um, anyways, that's how I do it. This is how, I mean, I can show you how to fillet, uh, but everybody's seen someone fillet, but I don't think many people have seen a, a style like this. And, and then I'll score them. I mean, I can do one like this, but... Um, 
just as an example, but just like that. Just see that? And then when you salt them, it just goes in there and it really makes for a nice presentation. And what I mean by salt, that you don't brine it. Just take a little bit of salt in your hand and go over it just like that. A little bit of salt in your hand, you know, maybe about a dime's worth and spread it on there. It makes it makes the skin crispy. Just like that. See that? Just scoring it like that. So the meat cooks evenly in these pieces. It makes for a great presentation. Uh, this just delicious. So I, I hope you guys enjoyed this. This is how I uh this is all the mangroves you see me catch. This is how I this is how I do it right here. And these are the <laughs> these are about the only tools that I really need. I don't even need the fine knife at all. But um that's how I do it. Hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Saltwater Fishing Tampa. Until then, happy fishing.